You are listening to the Black Radar YouTube channel. I think what is important is for us to embody the peace that we're feeling within so that it can start to manifest on the outside. Now, I think it's very important that we don't just shut down because a lot of people will tell you that they don't listen to the news anymore, they don't read the newspaper anymore, and so on. I understand why people shut those things out to maintain their inner peace. But I think it's important to allow a little bit of it in so that you can know exactly what's happening in this world that you're living in. So you are able to contextualize what is happening and then still cultivate peace within yourself, your inner self, as well as in your space. So what would you do to maintain that peace? I would say as best as possible, in spite of the chaos in the world, to cultivate in your immediate space, peace. And that means having friends and acquaintances that are on the peaceful side, because you know, you will think that we want excitement, but sometimes some of the excitement comes with drama and then drama, there's a thin line between drama and chaos. So look at that, assess it and determine whether it can lead to chaos and just distance that, right? So maintain that peace and calm within your friend circle. If you can do it within your family circle, you know, you should also strive to do it. That's not always easy because, you know, everybody comes with their different personality type. Everybody has their preferences. Everybody has their agendas. Everybody has their, you know, their selfish ways that might trigger you. But as best as possible, try to distance yourself from the situations that can escalate into drama and chaos. Another thing that one can do to maintain their peace in the midst of all the chaos in the world is to understand that there's always been chaos in the world and guess what it's always turned out just fine for the world so just remember this too shall pass and that knowledge kind of gives you a sense of okay if i can remain calm in the midst of the storm then i'm okay so as some people say be like the hurricane where there's a calm in the midst of the storm. Yeah, that takes, you know, some work, um, some level of discipline and some level of self-awareness. Maintaining calm in the midst of chaos, you know, it can be difficult. I think meditation helps because what meditation does is make you calmer. It makes your blood pressure a little lower, your heartbeat a little lower and other you know, vital functions in the body a little, you know, lower. And so your responses in the midst of uh, trigger triggering circumstances is going to be a little lowered. I've had many persons who were doing morning meditations, you know, with me one time say it has helped them so much because so many times when they are just about to let it go, they're just like, take a deep breath and be still. And they were able to maintain that calm. So I think that's also useful. Um, we tend to want to be stimulated a lot by having the television on all the time or having music on all the time or having some kind of external stimuli around us all the time. While we're driving sometimes long distances, we want to keep that. I would say or recommend that people try to keep the noise levels and the, the inputs at a minimum. At least give yourself an hour out of the day where there's total silence. The brain responds to silence and your whole system responds to silence. So we should give ourselves a little bit of conscious, awake silence so that we learn to cultivate peace and we know what peace feels like. We know what peace sounds like, yeah? And so those are the main things you know, but main, main thing is an awareness that this too shall pass and that you can create your entire world within yourself. And you can decide that that world that you create within yourself is not chaotic, it is peace. From the beginning of time, people have been hearing voices in their head. I remember watching cartoons, you know, and there's a little 
demon over here with a pitchfork and then there's a little angel over here with a halo and wings you know the bad guy the good guy the the, the negative voice and the positive voice there's also been uh, greater occurrences more most recently of persons carrying out acts violent acts and saying a voice in their head told them to do so so i want to differentiate between that voice and the voices that we sometimes hear in our head i think some of the violent crimes that have been committed that have been attributed to the that voice telling people what to do i think most of those are related to imbalances in the person um people people like to give those imbalances a name and say the person is crazy or they're you know uh, schizophrenic or whatever but a lot of it most of the times has to do with imbalances mineral imbalances chemical imbalances hormonal imbalances in the body which allow persons to kind of have hallucinations or sensations of seeing and hearing things and so a lot of the times by just including some minerals changing uh removing some of the stressors and nourishing the vagus nerve you know by eating properly some of that can be resolved now that situation where we are all having the voices in our heads um negative and positive those have to do with the 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 kinds of experiences that you've had you know a lot of us have had traumas during childhood and then when we have to come in to contact with situations that trigger us then we will have a particular response no if you're very negative then you're probably going to have a predominance of negative voices and if you're very positive then you're going to have a predominance of the positive voices what is important is that you become aware because you can actually fill your consciousness with more positive thoughts and then you experience more positive voices in your head right so it really has a lot to do with how you've been conditioned the kinds of experiences that you've had that color your perspective and therefore the kinds of conversations that you're going to have internally yeah and this is why positive affirmations help so much positive affirmations can literally um substitute for the negative um affirmations that you've had um who, that you've cultivated over the years because of your experiences so to distinguish between the two i would say your inner self normally has mostly positive and affirming um things to to, to offer in terms of saying anything and so if you're hearing positive affirming um statements or or voices in your head you know that that is your true self your higher self whenever you hear anything that is not affirming you be sure that that is not your higher self or your true self because your true self will never affirm you in a negative way so that's the main way of distinguishing between the two so the third eye which is located just about here as some people call it the first eye it's associated with the pineal gland and what is the pineal gland responsible for it? well the pineal gland is a part of the endocrine system so medically they say it is responsible for the body being able to sense between light and dark the circadian rhythm and when it becomes dark the body knows how to produce melatonin and so you're able to sleep now from the spiritual perspective what they're saying is that the third eye is associated with awareness and being able to recognize the i am the self which is awareness of self so it's different than the eyes that see and create awareness around what is around you for you to determine who you are the third eye it is believed is able to help you to de determine who you are based on your presence in the universe no a lot of us come on this planet and leave this planet without ever achieving that awareness because we're so consumed with what is going on around us and outside of us and we're very connected to the strictures and structures of society
the third eye allows you be a to be able to form an opinion of who you are outside of those strictures and structures of society. So what they say is that when your third eye is open, you know who you are, truly who you are, and you know who you are within the context of this universe, not within the context of society. So it's a greater awareness of who you are. Now, why they say it's dangerous is when you know who you are, then you're not easily controlled. You're not easily led because you can see the truth. Now, I was reading before, you know, a couple of weeks ago that why they consider the third eye, um, opening the third eye dangerous. And this is forcing it open because anywhere you go now, you can read a book or get on the, 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 the internet and find out how to open your third eye. So some people do things to induce the opening of the third eye. They say that that is dangerous because the third eye opening should be a gradual process, just like a fruit ripening, right? A fruit that is sun ripened on the tree is much better than a, a, a fruit that is induced, uh, has induced ripening, ripening. So when you induce the opening of your third eye, it may be a shock to your system because now you're able to have a heightened uh, awareness of your own five senses plus. So you're going to be able to see more. So you're able to see auras. You're able to um, sense energy, subtle energy. You know that situation where someone walks into the room and you're able to say straight off, I don't like that person or I like that person because you're able to see a lot more than their physical. You're able to see the energetic aspects of them. You're able to hear more. So it means that you're actually able to hear, uh, you know, perhaps voices from other realms. You're able to hear more frequency wise as well, more range and so on. So a lot of musicians, most musicians, the third, third eye is open because they are working around so much frequency that they're just able to perceive more. You're able to smell more, taste more, and then other senses actually come on online clear audience, clear sentience, um, clairvoyance, all of that. You're able to, your intuition is heightened. You can know what is going on um, in, in the future before it happens, which is a little daunting. It's a little scary for some people. Also, when your third eye is open, you have a lot more vivid dreams and the dreams are sometimes confusing because they're so real. And then those vivid dreams mix with your regular dreams and it creates a lot of confusion in your waking life. Another thing that happens is that you are able to uh, feel or uh, access other realms. Now, that part is scary because when you're able to access them and you don't understand, then you're vulnerable. And so you can have negative um, uh, entities or positive entities um, uh, being attracted or drawn to you or you experiencing them. That can be scary. So this is why people say, you know, don't go that way because it makes your, when your third eye is open, you're more vulnerable to the movement um, or being able to access the different realms and of course, whatever comes with those realms, right? Now, all of us were cultured to stay on the straight and narrow and don't delve into anything that can, yeah? And this is why they call it dangerous. It's not really dangerous. It's not going to harm you in any way. It's dangerous to society because no, it means that, you know, persons with their third eye open will not be easily controlled. They can see the truth of the situation, they cannot be fooled very easily. So those are the reasons why they consider it dangerous, but it's not physically dangerous. Another reason why it can be a problem is that it is one of the chakras in the body. You have the root, the sacral, the solar plexus, the heart, the throat, the third eye, and the crown. If you have blockages, in any of the other um, chakras, 
and then you don't resolve those blockages and you try to open this one, then you're going to have a whole mess of an imbalance. And that sometimes leads to what people may perceive as a little bit like a break, uh, a little spell of um, insanity because the, the, the circuit board, because remember it's all your central nervous system is not able to process all of that energy flow that is taking place. So I think it's an important thing to be guided in this area or just to leave it alone and let it happen naturally. Well, that's an excellent question, especially within the context of what we've experienced over the last uh, uh, two and a half years. One of the things that everybody knows about, you know, from one of the phrases, a well-known phrase is, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. What that means is that if you cultivate and understand your own spirituality and your own evolution and growth, and you take the time and invest the time and energy into manifesting your soul's evolution and your personal evolution, that's the best investment. Because when, you're, when you've done that, you're automatically vibrating at a much higher level. And when you're vibrating at a higher level, you're able to magnetize what it is that your, your soul and yourself needs in the moment, right? The, the, the flip side of that is persons have always believed based on what society looks like and how it's structured that if they achieve material success then everything else will fall into place i think we've seen enough globally to know that that is not uh that's not true it's false many people who have a lot of material wealth are suffering inside they're suffering from the pain of not having true friends, not having true relationships, not being able to be relaxed, not being able to trust because they're always thinking there's someone out to get them or get their material things, right? They suffer from not knowing if the love or the relationship that they're in is true or if it is as a result of the material things they have around them. They're unable to tell if their friends are true friends. And I've seen this, I've witnessed this for myself. So I know many people are, are going through an inner hell in spite of the material wealth. During the pandemic, a lot of people who had the material wealth were, were stuck inside their homes. And that is when themselves hit them. They were faced with themselves and many of them could not deal with it. A lot of the suicides and the depression that we witnessed during the pandemic was as a result of people having to face themselves for the first time. Sometimes material wealth will keep you from yourself, keep you from experiencing yourself because then you are able to pay for external experiences that make you think you feel good or that society says feels good, but really and truly you are not fulfilled. You're fulfilling on the physical material level, but you're not fulfilling on the spiritual, the personal, the emotional level, right? So I would say that pursuing spiritual growth and evolution is the best investment you can have. Another trend that I've been noticing is you know motivational speakers and motivational programs teaching you how to be um you know financially successful and uh, to be a winner to be a success and so i've seen extreme cases of people that live their lives on to-do lists and goal lists and objectives lists that can't be um, satisfying at the soul level. Yes, you're able to tick the boxes, but are you truly ticking the boxes on your growth and development? Or are you just ticking the boxes on what society has deemed to be success? So you hit 
those goals in terms of your financial, you hit the goals in terms of number of projects completed and number of times you appear, you know, in the newspaper or on the, the social pages or the number of parties that you get invited to. And those are, you know, benchmarks for persons who are dealing with material. But if you took those things away, what would you be left with? Right? Um, I also observe that in women who have perhaps married for, you know, material reasons. And sometimes they find themselves in a loveless marriage with everything that money can buy. But you can't buy love with money or with material things. And the, 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 the human is designed for love. And so in an, with an absence of love, there is always going to be a feeling of inadequacy, of sadness, of depression, unhappiness. And we're seeing a lot of that. So I just encourage all the young people, and even if you're middle-aged and you're still seeking for this thing that they've told you is going to make your life better, to stop and spend the time Search your soul, search yourself for what it is that you think you are here to do and start moving towards that. You're going to find all the resources that you need to help you on that journey once you stop and commit to that journey. I encourage everyone to do it because the, the smart ones who attain material wealth, they stop. And they spend the time to grow and evolve themselves so that they can be at peace with the material wealth and not just trying to hide it. There are a lot of superstars that just disappear and go beneath the radar. Those are the ones that understand because they cultivated themselves and they don't need validation externally. They don't need to be invited to this award and to be on this red carpet. They're fine. I can think of a, a couple of them that I admired when I was growing up. I'm thinking of basketball player, Michael Jordan, greatest of all time. But you never hear of Michael Jordan. He's fine. He's at peace. He's, you know, I may be wrong, guys, but this is one that comes to mind. That's a tricky question because many people feel as if they've been placed here to be educated, secure a career, get married, have children, and then leave. And we are now understanding more and more that this world is made up of people and situations and circumstances that are always in ebb and flow and flux. And that each one of us is here to play a role in influencing what needs to happen on this planet, in this dimension, to rebalance, right? There's some of us that are here to take things out of balance and some of us that are here to bring things back into balance. Who are you? Is, is that, is, are you part of that? Are you just here to, you know, to add, uh, you know, another warm body? Or are you here to add value? Are you here to create the next great leader by the way you have reared your child, or are you here to create the next murderer that takes things out of balance? Are you here to be the leader that the time that you're living in requires, or are you here to contribute to the chaos? All of us have a role because without the, the diversity, this world would be a homogeneous uh, pool of just automatons, and that's not what's happening. So there are different periods of time, different ages, and we come in during different ages to play a role, yeah? So it's really just about understanding that every soul has a purpose. Every soul has a mission. And that's a question that you need to ask yourself. If it never occurred to you during your, your teenage years when you were going through the education system and deciding what you want to be in life. Mm -hmm. If that question didn't happen then, because you were just 
uh, flowing with the tide of what your strengths and weaknesses were, at least when you hit your career and you've gotten that under your belt, you should ask that question. What is my purpose? Is my purpose just to procreate? Because guess what? There are some persons whose purpose is just to procreate. And then there are some persons whose purpose is just to care for people. And then there's some people whose purpose is just to love people. And there's people whose purpose is just to talk and to give information and to teach. And then there's some people whose purpose is to create and, and, and innovate. And then there's some persons who are here to just create chaos. And that's fine because this world is all about, you know, duality. The negative, the positive, the light, the dark. And it is with the, the duality that we have movement. You can't have um, power without a negative and a positive charge. You can't have life without those two um, um, polarities. So, you know, I think more and more people are asking themselves the question, why am I here? What is my purpose? It's a very important question to ask yourself because the answers are there, especially when you ask it. The minute you ask, what is my purpose? You start to see little snippets of it. Things will come to you on your phone. Things will come up on YouTube. People will give you a book. You'll run into a stranger on the street. You'll have a conversation that sparks it. So I encourage everyone to ask, what is my purpose? The informative information presented in this video is motivational and is positively aimed at inspiring, educating and entertaining the viewers with the cutting edge of critical reasoning. If you enjoy the contents on the Black Radar YouTube channel, please consider subscribing to show your support.